Uh, good morning. So uh, this is uh, probably the last class in this semester, and um, very quickly uh, let us uh, review what we had discussed in the last class. In the last class, we talked about the cycloaddition reactions, right? For and uh, that was exclusively uh, four plus two cycloaddition reactions. And in heterocyclic chemistry, there are all kinds of cycloaddition reactions, but the most popular ones uh, are 4 plus 2, 3 plus 2, 2 plus 2, 4 plus 3, and 5 plus 3. These are few, but there are many other uh, higher order cycloaddition reactions. Okay. And we begin with uh, 4 plus 2 cycloaddition reactions. Today, we will uh, begin with uh, 3, 3 plus 2 cycloaddition reactions, 3 plus 2 or cycloaddition reactions. And uh, may, um, quite often uh, you will be hearing also a terminology called 1, 3 um, dipolar cycloaddition reactions, dipolar cycloaddition reactions. In fact, um, both are pretty very similar, very similar. I think um, uh, you all understand the meaning of 1, 3 dipolar cycloaddition reactions. 1, 3 dipolar cycloaddition means you have uh, three different atoms in x let us say x y and z x y z and that means three atom uh, synthon or a reagent in which uh, the terminal atoms will have charge separations that means one end should be more negative other end should be positive and it could be and the intervening bonds could be um, double bond triple bond and all kinds all kinds a double bond and triple bond. At least one double bond must be present in one of those. So, the, so the, a dipole means a, a one three dipole means the charge separation takes place uh, between the two one and three atoms and uh, one uh, one and the third atom. And they are also of different um, uh, charges like uh, plus and minus, not plus plus or minus minus. And common reactions, all of you understand that um, uh, this sort of molecules or this sort of things can react with uh, olefin yes. and so obviously what you will find uh, after the reaction so you will have a, a kind of a, a five member ring system so that means 3 plus 2 cycloaddition reactions are exclusively the, for the five member reactions and uh, there are other uh, reacting partners that means uh, if they react with uh, triple bond so, this x and y and, and then z and then you will have a double bonded compounds. So, this uh, methodology is a very powerful methodology and this lecture would be uh, sort of uh, devoted to one of the very pioneer in this field uh, Rolf Wiesgen, this is a German chemist uh, he is now more than 90 years old and so very pioneer I mean he actually throughout his life maybe 30 40 years he um, worked exclusively on the 3 plus 2 cycloaddition reactions or the 1 3 dipolar cycloaddition reactions and many of you probably know uh, some of the reactions we will talk about but um, one of the earliest reactions one of the earliest reactions uh, in ge german industry was the conversion of conversion of uh, cyclopentene to cyclopentanone in one step in one step how can it be done and again this was due to Rolf Wiesgen and a German company uh, what they did they reacted with nitrous oxide if the nitrous oxide what happens uh, I think if you write the structure of nitrous oxide uh, it would be uh, it's an again uh, a structure like this and all of us know uh, the structure would look like so that means so that means uh, first and third atoms are um, charge separated and um, one is plus and other is minus and so it is in one three dipole and that undergoes cycloaddition reactions cycloaddition this this is what we call these three plus two cycloaddition reaction and so, what you will find? You will find a pyrazole derivative, a pyrazole derivative. Now, what next? 
the next is just uh, simply uh, heating heating is good enough heating is good enough uh, that would uh, re, uh, rearrange or that that will shift the hydrogen eventually what will get this uh, with the loss of nitrogen you can get this cyclohexanone uh, cyclopentanone that was one of the earliest reactions and uh, i don't know whether this is now being used in industry or not but um, but this is just uh, an example to tell you the cyclo addition reactions could be very powerful otherwise and in heterocyclic chemistry also <coughs> there are many kinds of actually 1 3 dipole so uh, some of the reactions probably you, you would know let us say if you have an ester group here and dimethyl diazomethane dimethyl diazomethane or you can say diazopropane and uh, if you allow it to react at uh, let us say 0 degree centigrade. So, what is the reaction? What is the reaction? Diazomethane normally uh, is a again a cycloaddition reaction takes place, cycloaddition reaction takes place, cycloaddition reaction takes place, but uh, so uh, one can quickly write that this is the structure and the double bond participates in the reaction and but there is a uh, there is an ambiguity that nitrogen end can on uh, react on this side and uh, carbon end can on the reaction on this side normally the carbon ends becomes this uh, um, negative charge so you can say uh, this is a uh, negative charge and uh, if you uh, write uh, this is this is uh, what Mm, uh, plus this is minus and so uh, the electron flow as if uh, comes through carbon and uh, and so uh, attacks this beta carbon here and then uh, this one goes to this so what you'll find you'll find a uh, five member ring uh, this is an ester here and this is methyl group and nitrogen and nitrogen and yeah, uh, sorry uh, nitrogen and then you have this methyl group here right so there is something wrong uh, this should be double bond this should be double bond so this are uh, this is pretty well known right uh, for example um, nowadays uh, one of the uh, very popular reaction uh, is uh, let us say if you begin with uh, phenyl azide phenyl azide and which is equivalent to phenyl this is nitrogen again and nitrogen and so one can uh, write this this is this is best way to write this is an azide here and if it is reacted with an alkene uh, so electron deficient alkene so uh, the electron flow again uh, through what sort of phenyl and it takes place and so uh, what you will find uh, uh, again a five member ring so it's a nice reaction. That means you don't lose anything. Cycle addition means you don't uh, lose anything. So we'll have sort of triazole derivative. It's a triazole derivative. And by now, all of you know uh, this sort of reaction is known as click reaction. So uh, click reaction. Then a uh, few days ago, it's, it's pretty popular. Uh, you know, but I mean, almost everybody knows. But but you have to know what are the qualifications uh, to be met. To for a reaction to be called as uh, click reaction. Click, uh, what is the first criteria? It's a cycloaddition reaction. The, uh, uh, there are several several uh, criteria that to be fulfilled by a reaction to be known as click reactions. But normally, click reaction is reserved for the azide and alkene or alkyne cycloaddition reactions. Okay. There are other um, one three dipoles. For example, uh, in fact, um, uh, in the compounds of this kind all of us know um, if you have compound of this kind then uh, again and um, an electro deficient system so uh, sometimes uh, room temperature sometimes heat in this particular example uh, uh, just uh, heat is required so what you will get you will get uh, isooxazole once again the polarizations and attacks takes place through the carbon here and so E, but normally this is R and, and this is phenyl and then of course, uh, you will have this isomeric problem the isomers are often uh, obtained and um, 
Uh, what is the net result? This is a basically again a reaction and the substrate here is known as nitron, nitron. So, nitron cyclization sometimes we call nitron cyclization, but this reaction and uh, what does it do? Uh, essentially, if you um, normally the nitron cyclization products are broken uh, or rather are cleaved uh, at the nitrogen oxygen bond. So, if this is cleaved then eventually it will give you an open chain compound. But net result, if you look at this, uh, is the formation of a new carbon carbon bond between uh, the carbon adjacent to this alpha uh, uh, adjacent to the nitrogen and the beta carbon of this acrylate. So, it is again a, a, a simplified version of a CC bond formation, CC bond formation. Uh, but we mechanistically view this as a uh, 1 3 dipolar cycloaddition reactions. Um, Quite interestingly, I will give you one more uh, reaction. Uh, if you begin with um, benzaldehyde and then uh, ethyl uh, ethyl diazoacetate, ethyl diazoacetate, and uh, of course uh, this is uh, two times twice. Two, uh, then a reagent that would decompose. Diazo compounds. What is the um, uh, reagent normally used for decomposition of the diazo compounds? Copper, copper silver, perfect chloride, co even copper salts also useful, cupric acid, triflates, all these things. But one of the finest one is finest one is dirhodium tetraacetate is one of the finest uh, di di dirhodium tetraacetate, or uh, you can substitute the acetate with a longer uh, chain uh, acids and just heat normally is a toluene but benzene temperature is sufficient. What you will see the products uh, product here is a very uh, interesting product uh, um, it is a uh, ketal it is a ketal uh, with uh, ben uh, phenyl here and the phenyl here phenyl here and phenyl here. Uh, suppose you did not know this me uh, method, then you, uh, for the preparation of this sort of ketal, what you, you would have done? You would have taken a diol and then benzaldehyde, and that is this conventional one. But um, uh, that means, but that requires acid, but in this case, it is somewhat like a neutral to me, a reaction medium, new reaction neutral medium. And, and what is this mechanism? The mechanism goes like this. So, once uh, it, it forms a new kind of a dipole, new kind of a dipole, you have if you rewrite the structure would look like this and if it decomposes it forms uh, carbon right. So, this is a carbon and the, the lone pair oxygen goes to the carbon here. So, what you will find? You will find so C H right a double bond and then uh, electron of oxygen is donated to the carbon. So, this should be plus and this should be minus and this. So, essentially uh, you can uh, write the resonating structure, if you resonating structure you will find uh, this is plus oxygen and C H and uh, then C O 2 E T and this minus right or or the, uh, I mean uh, there are all kinds of this is uh, all kinds of problem there yeah, this is this could be C H minus uh, oxygen and C plus. So, <coughs> what next and all of us uh, all of us can guess between all the among the all the three uh, all the three uh, the one that would be or other ok let me uh, quickly uh, rewrite. Uh, the dipole, the dipole here is a carbon, oxygen, and CH. This is plus, this is minus, and this is uh, oh, this problem again. Uh, ester here. So I mean, uh, you can uh, you can write, you can re rewrite also. This is C minus oxygen, and this is plus, and this is ester. And what next? Then you have an additional molecule of benzaldehyde. So, benzaldehyde would that means it would react with this end and this oxygen would uh, attack this. So, what you will find? 
that uh, the product would be uh, this C H, this is what uh, this um, C H P and then oxygen and this and in this case you have this ester. So, uh, this is just an example of basically the 1 3 dipole. Then, then uh, just very quickly. So, what are the uh, I, mean, I mean in principle uh, what you need is a heteroatom uh, that means like oxygen, nitrogen etcetera you need a heteroatom and uh, in all cases the products you get is in a heterocyclic product. So, what are the uh, possible uh, possible 1 3 dipoles there are so many possibilities right uh, so many uh, possibilities. Right. So, uh, what are the possible dipoles? That means uh, x, y, x, y, and z. So you can have all kinds of the combinations: nitrogen, 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 and uh, carbon, nitrogen, 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 carbon, nitrogen. All uh, permutation combination you can come. But in um, heterocyclic chemistry, uh, only few of them are regularly used, or I should say, more popular. More popular. One of them is. I think I think uh, the one I'll uh, only today will basically talk about yes. Sir, how is that resonance structure obtained? Or, or, or how is resonance structure obtained? Uh, okay, maybe uh, this is uh, is it a, a trivial question or a tough question, Joy? And then I will take it up otherwise I will not take it up. Okay, you, you can just uh, do this little bit. So, that then it becomes C H right ok. So, this fine. So, it becomes C H minus and this is right. So, it is a good question for uh, um, BSC resonance ok. Uh, any case, uh, so 1 3 dipole, 1 3 dipole uh, is this and so uh, you can have all kinds of combinations ok. And uh, just very quickly I will just summarize and uh, only I will take up today only two of them. I think uh, I think uh, some uh, two means uh, one on uh, is known as uh, <coughs> I think uh, we have already, already talked about uh, azides, right? Azides, uh, azides means so, so you have uh, this nitrogen again. That means all the atoms are nitrogen, and this is plus and this is minus. So what are the uh, comments? I think we have already uh, known that this should be known as the. Uh, okay, we will. We are not going to talk about today. What we will be talking about today is uh, azo. In the methane elite, it is a very popular uh, uh, um, dipole, it is a very popular dipole and how does it look as a methane elite. The name tells you uh, in this case as you know as you is a sort, somewhat like a misnomer right many of it are. Diogenium salt it has 2 nitrogen, as a compound has how many nitrogen as a compound you see as is 1 as is 2 again and diazo also too. So, all uh, there, there, are, there is a little difference in the nomenclature <laughs> when you say azo, this is a classical name. So, azo means actually it has a nitrogen here double bonded nitrogen and methane means C H. So, that means it will have a C H and elite, elite means you will have one or more um, one more sort of a carbon. So, that means it is a negative charge uh, uh, negative charge and <coughs> this one is a positively charged positively charged. So, the, this is called azomethane elite azomethane elite ok. And um, then there are uh, the carbonyl carbonyl elite carbonyl elite again instead of the nitrogen what you will have you will have something like this mm, minus and oxygen plus. So, these are all these carbonyl, these carbonyl elites and you have already known say diazo alkanes this um, constitute another category of this thing then I, I will not write that I think all of us know 
uh, okay how is that fine and then there is a uh, we have already talked about uh, nitrons nitrons means uh, how do i write nitrons uh, so nitrogen oxygen minus this plus double bond c here and mind it um, uh, this nitrogen must contains another carbon another carbon or which uh, sometimes the carbon can be substituted by nitrogen like aldehydes and ketone the name is derived from ketones ketones nitrons and all these things okay then uh, this is another very popular one uh, nitrile oxides nitrile oxides nitrile oxide means all of us know nitrile is essentially the cyanide and if you just oxidize at nitrogen so it becomes the nitrogen plus and oxygen minus oxygen minus oxygen minus then there are many other things nitronates and all kinds of things nitronates then i mean uh, we have i mean there are many many okay so uh, today we will we'll just take it up uh, take up only uh, this one azomethan elite is very popular and the carbonyl elites and the rest we will not talk about okay maybe if time permits we will uh, do a little bit of an exercise on the, uh, this sort of things so <coughs> in discussing about these azomethan elite uh, what is the first thing what you should uh, know about not the first thing we should know about a uh, little bit of the history maybe i mean how this sort of concept was uh, derived or um, or and how it is uh, used and then how it was developed into a synthetic chemistry a synthetic chemistry okay one of the earliest reaction uh, in the chemical literature was this uh, hydrogen derivative Uh, transforming to to a cyclic compound with um, in the presence of lead tetraacetate is an lead tetraacetate if you treat with lead tetraacetate and methanol methanol what you will get you will get a five member diazo compound or say pyrazole five member oxo pyrazole and like this so you have methyl group and then in on side we have this so this was known this was known okay and uh, you, you can guess uh, you can guess i think uh, the mechanistically uh, if you uh, look at uh, this uh, lone pair goes to this nitrogen the double bond shifts hydrogen goes to the lead eventually the cyclization takes place this is one of the very early example early examples and if you hit this molecule here at 90 70 degree centigrade and um, one can guess and what is the uh, uh, what is the product i mean someone probably would uh, argue that okay this compound um, will have a di radical structure with loss of nitrogen but uh, the, um, uh, the mechanistic organic chemists they suggested that this compound uh, has a um, dipolar structure is a, a dipolar structure like this okay so dipolar structure and uh, so the and or you can write like this you can write like this as if uh, uh, this lone pair goes here nitrogen and this so you have a, so uh, again uh, this is known as what or this intermediate is known as carbonyl elite so uh, it looks like you have a carbonyl plus and then corresponding carbon is uh, negative charge this sort of thing and this has been well proven well proven means if you uh, uh, carry out the reaction in presence of acetone uh, as, uh, carry out the reaction in presence of acetone what you will find uh, the the product that would be forming uh, again uh, a five membered ring five membered ring with two oxygen here and uh, this ome and meth, uh, this methyl and uh, so <coughs> in, other, in other words uh, this uh, carbon uh, this uh, negative charge goes to the carbon and then oxygen uh, oxygen uh, attacks uh, attacks this carbon here so eventually you get then 13 uh, dioxalane dioxalane salt okay now uh, one could have argued okay the intermediate is you no know, radical etc etc 
but uh, this sort of intermediate has been also uh, trapped by uh, chloroform. So, one can guess you know what would be the product here all of us know the chloroform does not undergo radical kind of reactions very easily. So, uh, the way it has been and uh, what has been found that this uh, negative charge pick up picks up this uh, uh, hydrogen and then C C L 3 minus goes to the, the other carbon and that means the product that would be formed here is this is C C L 3 and then oxygen up here and then you have this 2 methyl group and the chloroform hydrogen is picked up. This is this is one of these earliest example. What does it I mean by giving this example what I meant to say that this sort of uh, elites structure which was originally proposed in a uh, very old literature could be short living or existing or uh, it could be a reality it could be a reality. With this then I mean people have tried many other examples for example, very nice example uh, let us say I think whether um, we can predict any reactions uh, from a compound of this kind where you have uh, few substituent around an epo epoxy ring system and this is an array here. Suppose we did not know anything about this uh, chemistry of the epoxide the special chemistry of the epoxide and if we heat uh, such a compound what do we expect what do we expect. C, uh, normally C C bond breaking why suddenly epoxides are not known to undergo C C bond formations of uh, breakage. Okay. But because of the substituents because the substituents I think uh, this epoxide they undergo electrocyclic op ring opening electrocyclic ring opening 4 electron electrocyclic ring opening. And uh, uh, if you uh, look at the uh, end uh, rather intermediate what you will find this is oxygen now positive charge here and this is very uncommon among the epoxides, but when you have heavily substituted epoxide you will find uh, this uh, epoxide undergoes ring opening, but how, how do we know. So, if suppose simply if you heat it and then uh, cool it you go back to the you go back to the starting material. So, but we cannot prove right, but <laughs> if uh, the only proof which is somewhat indirect is this if uh, you can uh, carry out the reaction in the presence of a uh, presence of let us say presence of an um, olefin electron rich olefin electron rich olefin of this kind that means ethyl vinyl ether ethyl vinyl ether and the way I have written one can quickly understand uh, what should be the uh, product uh, because uh, this oxygen lone pair uh, uh, drives this lone pair to this uh, end and the negative charge goes to this one. So, eventually what you will find? You will find a uh, furan derivative, furan derivative with uh, ethoxy here then uh, C n uh, C n and this phenyl and on this side you will have an aryl group in the aryl group and the yield of the reaction is in this particular case is 100 percent is 100 percent and one isomer. Of course, uh, this is somewhat uh, I mean unpredictable, but we got one isomer. So, that means the, uh, the earlier example was an historical example or uh, okay. uh, for a long time this, this chemistry was not explored because of the non availability of the methods by which one can produce in the carbonyl elite carbonyl elite. Now, uh, this is one of the ways finest way of getting into the carbonyl elite. epoxide can be ring open to the carbonyl elite and then subsequently this elite can be trapped by various olefinic substrates olefinic substrates and this has been generalized uh, by uh, many other cases like uh, uh, one of the case uh, one of the cases uh, could be uh, here in heavily substituted again in epoxide an internal double bond that um, substituent like acrylate part then you have this vinyl uh, silane and it requires little high temperature 145 degree centigrade and if you then if you mix up with or rather if you uh, mix with uh, 
एसिटिलिन डाई कार्बोक्सीट एसिटिलिन डाई कार्बोक्सीट सो आई मीन एज यूजल एज यूजल वॉट यूड एक्सपेक्ट यूड एक्सपेक्ट अगेन ए रिंग ओपनिंग ऑफ द इपॉक्साइड the polarization takes place in this direction probably because of this electron withdrawing group so i think uh, i'll just write only the part of it so what we'll see uh, uh, this becomes a positive end and this become negative end and then you have this ester part okay so okay this silicon here silicon here and this then uh, one can uh, i mean uh, all of you can write the structure would be the final structure would be A, again a furan derivative is a furan derivative here and uh, all these substituents are as it is uh, ignore the stereochemistry at the moment because there is no uh, specificity here and so uh, this is r oh, sorry okay on and r okay so it has to just uh, take the uh, uh, okay this is let it say e and then you have this vinyl Silyl groups, silyl groups. So uh, these two examples tells you that uh, these sort of uh, reactions are quite general. And more interestingly, more interestingly, uh, there is one more example where you will have heavily substituted epoxide, methyl, and phenyl, and um, you know, as the substituents. And uh, this is uh, then if you photolyze at uh, 245. To, to sorry 254 nanometer 254 nanometer you can get also these carbonyl halides carbonyl halides carbonyl halides and then it can be trapped with these cyano compound with the cyano compounds and the corresponding uh, furan derivative is obtained furan derivative is obtained okay so it's a very general reaction what else can you do what what else can you do There is another interesting way of uh, producing these carbonyl halides. Carbonyl halides. Uh, this example could be uh, again from the decomposition of the diazo compounds. Like we have seen decomposition in the one of these previous examples, we have seen that decomposition of the diazo compounds. And, uh, so that's a very general reaction. Uh, I'll just give you one uh, simple synthesis of uh, uh, substituted furan, uh, which starts from. A <coughs> malonate derivative, where you have the one end is this amide, other is end is the ester. Then do a typical reaction of uh, this. Okay, so it's a new kind of a furan synthesis. Let us say. So we'll begin with uh, a uh, new furan synthesis. Furan synthesis um, via. carbonyl elite okay so let us see whether you can predict the um, product uh, the one of the reactant reactants is uh, tosyl azide tosyl azide and the base is used is a dbu anybody can guess what is the product Azide transfer. It's an azide transfer reaction. Azide transfer reaction. So uh, no, it's a double bond CaO uh, Me, and then nitrogen up here, and the, the negative charge goes to the nitrogen, and tosyl amide is produced. Tosyl amide is produced. So okay, tosyl amide produced. So what you will find? This is basically <coughs> the corresponding. Diazo compound, so it is not it is not azide transfer. It is a diazo transfer. This should be known as azide means three carbon nitrogen. So it should be known as uh, diazo transfer. Okay, this is a very useful method. Though one of the Indian scientists from Hyderabad actually described this one, but now we have all kinds of variations. Very well, interestingly, now uh, this popular reagent, so uh, dirhodium. tetraacetate tetraacetate and normally it's told in our benzene and heat so what do you expect oh sorry i think i made a mistake here uh, i made a mistake i made a mistake actually it is not the malonate uh, 
uh, it should be uh, it should be in a sort of an urea derivative. So, you have one more carbonyl one more carbonyl up here. One more carbonyl up here. Okay. So, <laughs> if you heat it, uh, obviously, uh, thing um, by now we know that it forms a, it forms a, a carbon. So it's a carbon here, then uh, double bond, and you have a nitrogen up here. Nitrogen up here. So, uh, what next? I think uh, lone pair goes to form the carbonyl imide. So, nitrogen and uh, then the ester here uh, carbonyl uh, carbonyl il ilide means oxygen plus and this carbon minus and the substituent here is methyl group. And this sort of compound once again uh, if you react with the alkynes electron deficient alkyne or uh, okay, electron deficient alkyne okay, methyl here then CO 2 Me. So, uh, all of you can write the product would be product would be a <coughs> bicyclic compound. So, carbonyl Then uh, you have these two ester groups and ester groups here, and then you have this nitrogen and this nitrogen and this, and you have this. Okay, so it's a bicyclic compound. Right? Understood. So what next? If you recall, uh, uh, the title was furan synthesis by cyclo carbonyl elite formation. Okay, carbon via carbonyl elite. So, and if uh, actually uh, a, a retro dill solder takes place thereafter. Thereafter. So, what is the product? Product would be it's a furan derivative with the two ester groups here at uh, 2, three, uh, 3 and 4 positions and and the two position is occupied by dimethyl amino group and what is the loss? The loss is the molecule that is being lost methyl isocyanate, methyl isocyanate, methyl isocyanate, it is a very uh, methyl isocyanate. So, uh, now this reaction now let us say one more example probably I will give you uh, whether, uh, see whether you can uh, uh, write the structure of the product. Uh, this is uh, from an oxazoline derivative, oxazoline derivative. Uh, so, <coughs> and the Substituents are the esters, and here I think I will straight away write it said again a diazo compound, it is a diazo compound. Now, as usual, uh, this uh, dirhodium tetraacetate, but uh, this requires little low temperature 1, 2 uh, dichloro uh, ethane, which has a boiling point around 80, 80 degree centigrade. Okay. So, I think all of you can guess uh, what could be uh, what, uh, the if this reaction is trapped with phenyl malleamide, phenyl malleamide, phenyl malleamide. So, what should be the product? What should be the product? In fact, uh, the product that is formed here, I will straight away write the product is a benzenoid. No, that means. Uh, this uh, carbonyl elide is being used for the formation of a benzenoid, not the heterocycle, but uh, the diazo compound, the, the carbonyl elide actually forms from a heterocycle. Okay. And so, this is uh, ester group here, this is OME, and 
the other portion is the corresponding dinophile, corresponding dinophile. So, mechanistically as a, a once again this is a sort of a like a repetition. So, you will have nitrogen then oxygen here on this side. Now, uh, after this formation of the carbon it will form the carbonyl elite of this kind and here you will have the methoxy. So, this methoxy is retained this ester is retained okay. and uh, if you have then dill solder. So, undergoes thermal uh, reaction. Uh, so, what you will find this will be this as a typical um, uh, cycloaddition reaction cycloaddition reactions and this is OME. Then uh, this is your oxazole part oxazole part and then you have this ester here ester here and what next I think again uh, uh, thermal uh, loss of water. So, you will have this and then uh, eventually uh, we will have one more hydrogen that will undergo thermal isomerizations to this product. So, giving all these examples basically we are trying to uh, tell you that this sort of uh, carbonyl elite reactions are pretty useful reactions. Okay. Now, what is the other way of um, having the cycloaddition done? I think the um, one next most important that we will be talking about this azomethine elite, azomethine elite. We have already told you how to write azomethane elite. Azo in this case it is basically an unsaturated nitrogen, uh, methane means this. Uh, and then you have the light means you have to have a negative charge and this is positive charge. Okay. Once again this sort of chemistry was not I mean known for a long time, but when people came up with the um, uh, methods by which they can be uh, easily be produced then uh, these reactions became very popular. In our country uh, Ganesh Pandey has been very pioneer in this area in this area. Okay the uh, one of these ways to produce this sort of uh, intermediate how to produce uh, was to have uh, the silyl compounds. So, with a silyl group adjacent to nitrogen uh, the, this was the minimum requirement and then you if you look at the structure here you have to produce a double bond. So, that means you have to have a good living group, but uh, many of you know many of the living groups adjacent to nitrogen are not viable having a living group close to nitrogen is not viable. For example, if you have OH here it is not very stable because of the lone pair of the nitrogen. So, you have to have a living group which should be poorer than OH and amines and etcetera okay. and but then it should be livable or so rather I should it say it should be I mean departing this group I mean substrate. So, in this case let us say the one that he, that was suggested was nitro cyano. So, and the other portion is of course, this uh, is a protecting group here. Now, if you treat this with a fluoride all of us know fluoride would attack at the silicon. So, it, for, it forms a it forms a carbon ion carbon ion fine, but at the same time you have to have a uh, I mean driving force for releasing this cyano group. So, how do you do? Uh, so, you have to have an electrophilic kind of thing that would abstract this cyano uh, some special affinity to uh, which one silver right. So, in fact uh, this was done with silver fluoride. So, silver fluoride. So, if you do so that means, uh, one can quickly uh, make this one this derivative. So, this is actually azomethane derivative. There are other methods I think I will not uh, maybe I uh, will give you one more example one more example uh, let us say there are other way of uh, in fact, instead of this cyano you can also have you can also have OR alkoxy 
that means a group poorer than the OH groups, etc. So, alkoxy is all of you know is under uh, and that uh, that mean uh, cyano can be replaced by alkoxide and there is, there is another way of making it. Um, you can have uh, two silicons, two silicons um, uh, around this nitrogen, and that requires, however, say photolytic reactions. Uh, DCN, dicyano, I forgot, oh, naphthalene, right, dicyano naphthalene, 1 4 dicyano naphthalene, um, uh, and then light. So, you can generate, uh, you can generate again. Uh, this uh, sort of uh, dipoles, uh, one three dipoles, so the negative and positive. See, this, this is one of the means uh, silyl derivatives of the corresponding uh, amine compounds can be desilylated to produce this azomethanilide. And then there is another uh, sort of uh, way of doing it. I uh, think the best thing would be. Uh, <coughs> I mean just imines, imines or imenium uh, salts for example, if you have a substrate of this kind right, then if you put an electron withdrawing group here, with, with withdrawing group here let us say an uh, ester group and then of course, uh, ester group then uh, one can uh, from, from here the ammonium salt let us say uh, ammonium kind of salt here then uh, uh, automatically the uh, alpha position becomes uh, a little more susceptible to uh, hydrogen abstraction and so hydrogen now uh, in presence of a base uh, you can produce this is one of the finest and quickest way of uh, doing it uh, this is uh, hydrogen and r plus and this so you will have a nice uh, azomethanilide. This is one of the I mean that means I mean, so, uh, and imine formations all of you know is very simple. Imine formation is very simple uh, from carbonyl compounds and the amine. So uh, this part looks like a, the, this part looks like a amino acid and the other part is the aldehyde. And I will just uh, illustrate this uh, uh, azomethanilide formation uh, by the, the synthesis of a natural products called lamellarin 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 H the molecule uh, looks I think you have seen it before uh, it is a pyrrole derivative it is a uh, pyrrole derivative it is a tetra substituted tetra substituted and uh, pyrrole derivative and the molecule would look like a real big molecule it is a biologically active molecule and this and then you have OH of here OH or oh, this is basically o, uh, here and there OH. and then you have so many OH groups here. Okay. This is the target. If you recall in one of these uh, previous classes we talked about the synthesis of this, this kind of molecule by application of Suzuki coupling. You start with a pyrrole derivative and go on putting this aryl groups here. But if you see, uh, look at the synthesis we will be describing now it is much more, much more convenient and, and looks a uh, little interesting in the sense that the formation of this uh, formation of uh, this spiral ring by cyclo addition is pretty use, uh, very easy very easy you do not need any sophisticated methods sophisticated method. Uh, the first thing what is done uh, let us say uh, I think uh, in brief I will write uh, AR means one of those uh, phenyl groups you begin with an acetylenic compound and uh, then with an aldehyde the sub and uh, here and the methoxy here and this uh, let us say uh, again methoxy for example. First this one is converted to converted to 
e, phenol protect and on the other side you will have O R O M E and this is O M E. Okay. And uh, how do you do it? I think this is a undergraduate chemistry, right? Santan, uh, let us uh, hear from you. Eh? Dakin reaction. Dakin reaction. Dakin reaction requires an OH group, right? Adjacent uh, OH group. It is an undergraduate problem though, um, uh, um, very uh, interesting problem. <coughs> huh? The reason for the is H2O2 and H2O2 and H2O2 and H2O2 okay, other than H2O2 and H2O2, what else can you do? Uh, the reason for the Okay. Uh, let us say um, in this case, the first one was uh, MCPBA. MCPBA. What does it do? Uh, MCPBA actually converts this formal group into format. Format. That means aryl group migrating to the oxygen. So uh, what you'll uh, see here. No, it's not the it's not the ducking the axis. Ducking the axis possible, but yes, uh, but uh, ducking the axis normally yields are not that great. Not great. See, if you have an aldehyde, huh? yes, sir, that's what I'm telling. You. If you have an OH group, that's very easy. This OH group is very easy. See, the ducking the axis itself is biophilic oxidation. It's a plain biophysical oxidation, aryl group migrating to the oxygen. So what you will find here, I mean, it, let us say A prime. So what uh, the, that's it. That means insertion of an oxygen between the aryl group and the formyl group. It's a basic. Then what you do, uh, you have to just release this to OH group. How do you do that? Hydrolysis, yes. Hydrolysis that is obvious. It's the format you convert this, but uh, the preferred method preferred method that at this moment you have to uh, think about other methods also not classical OH etcetera etcetera. Okay. The preferred method is simply uh, ammonia and what else methanol methanol okay. that is basically is a transesterification trans trans So, then this is converted to converted into OH and Once again, an an ester here, and so you take iodoacetic acid, iodoacetic acid. So from iodoacetic acid, you corresponding the ester is, and uh, how do you do? Uh, not it's not very trivial though. You have to use DCC here, DCC and DMAP, DMAP. Okay. Next, you do you uh, take a dihydro isochlorine, dihydro isochlorine, and this oxygen of e and all these things, or uh, then uh, this solvent. So that would lead to the quaternization. That lead to the quaternization, and uh, so, so and nitrogen here and this is this uh, acetic acid part and this is this one and then this. So, you get uh, the quaternization here. So, what is then uh, if you uh, see that is the triple bond here and that is the aryl part, aryl part here and the rest as it is you know uh, uh, here and there you have this oxygen here, oxygen here all these things. So, what we will see that now this is an ammonium salt and we have an hydrogen here which should be abstractable 
uh, in the presence of a base uh, which is known as Hunic base uh, isopropyl uh, so basically it is a tri uh, it is in a trialkene I mean base uh, this gets converted into the dipole 1 3 dipole 1 3 dipole. So, what we will have now uh, this is negative charge and this is negative uh, the positive charge here I think uh, I think I will write this way other otherwise uh, this is then carbonyl maybe now we will have this sorry okay, uh, this one and then you have this uh, triple bond right and this is AR this is AR and then you have all kinds of this oxygen here and here oxygen here and here. So, this will undergo now this will under you see here the triple bond is not a very activate, activated one neither uh, neither does it have any electron withdrawing groups nor it is you uh, know uh, otherwise activated. So, the, uh, this under the condition uh, this reaction takes place and it forms the pyrrole ring the spiral ring. So, the pyrrole ring then of course, uh, one, uh, if you write the pyrrole ring then uh, you will have a product uh, without the double bond up here. So, uh, you treat this uh, with DDQ dichlorides I know uh, quinone benzoquinone and uh, that would aromatize this uh, quinol ring and then uh, subsequently uh, you treat this with boron trichloride uh, is a re reagent known for or demethylations O demethylations. So, O demethylation so you get to the compound called lamellarine. So, so this I mean I mean very quickly I have said about this one, but essentially it is a azomethane elite and there are uh, two kinds one is that silicon substrate silicon substituted substrate for the synthesis and the other one this one is an uh, imenium salt imenium salt which can be converted into uh, the azomethane elite uh, ok. And uh, mind it uh, this uh, this does not require any activated alky alkynes. So, similarly this sort of uh, reactions also is very uh, useful for unactivated alkene provided it is uh, uh, within uh, present within the molecule that means, if the reaction is an intermolecular one this 1 3 dipole is nicely reacts with an unactivated ordinary olefins means uh, otherwise unactivated ok. And uh, maybe if, ok I think we have run out of time and you can uh, try to work out one of these uh, problems at home. Uh, the problem is like this uh, this is again uh, uh, this is again from a uh, this, um, recent literature if you mix up with proline heated with benzaldehyde in the presence of nitromethane you get a you get nice uh, CC bond formation nice CC bond formation and see whether you can work out the mechanism.